tell your neighbor, this is your lesson. Matthew 17, verse 14. Are you there? And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. 17, then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I, I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon. And it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Verse 19, then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, because of your un unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, the last scripture we have read, uh, the last verse 20, it says, nothing will be impossible for you. Amen. Can, can, you ask, ask, can you ask your neighbor, are all things possible for you? Can you just ask your neighbor that question and allow your neighbor to answer, are all things possible for you? This is the promise that Jesus spoke here. He said, you will say, move from here and there, and, and, it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing. You know, I was reading this. I will tell you what happened here. In fact, I want to talk about unbelief. Because most of the time we think unbelief is a lack of faith. We think that. Unbelief is without faith. Is to have a distrust. Unbelief is to be distressed or refusing to believe after you believe something. If you can see here, Jesus climbed the mountain with three disciples. And there was Peter, James, and John. No, no, the Petro, James, Lee, Johanne. But on the foot down on the mountain, there were disciples left there. So now, the people came, and this man also came. They approached the disciples. So this man said, my child is epileptic. So, Please, you walk with Jesus. Can you heal my child? So, you can see by where we have read that they failed. And the Bible says, on top of the mountain, and the Bible says, is when Moses and Elijah appear to Jesus. And they were talking about that he is going to die. And then that's where Peter, when he was there, when he woke up, he said, let's build 
mountain. There was a revelation on top of the mountain. But failure on the bottom of the mountain. And the Bible says they descended. And when they were going down, Jesus promised the disciples, don't say that revelation. So Jesus until you wake up until I resurrect. So something happened. When Jesus was looking down there, you he see people were questioning. People were just saying, I mean, why are you failing to? Others will say, are you not working with Jesus? When he reached there, he say, what are you asking them? The moment they saw Jesus, the Bible said they ran with excitement. And say, you know, Jesus, the men spoke and say, my son. That's why he said, bring this boy to me. And he healed the boy. The disciples, they were surprised. Where we are reading, the Bible says, they ask him, why we fail to cast that demon? Jesus spoke with them and said, this one needs fasting and prayer. In other words, you people, you are faithless. generation. Hallelujah. Amen. People are perverse. But faithless. Can you tell somebody that? In other words, when you are perverse, there is something you believe in. That, that you believe something that does not bring faith. I saw that after they've moved there. If you can read, you will hear them talking about you know, who's going to be big. They are talking who will take over here. Is it the one who will take over here? After, the, after Jesus said, this kind, fasting and prayer. I don't know if you're hearing that. In other words, Jesus was saying, there was still something in your body that you don't want to change. Because fasting deals with your body. So the unbelief is in your body. The actions you are doing throughout of your body. And you don't want to change those things. So now when you face a demon. You, you fail to cast it out because of some characters you are showing. That's what Jesus was saying. He said, this kind need yourself to be disciplined. This kind need yourself to change things that you told yourself you won't change. You know, I found something that I want to tell you. You know, I found something that I want to tell you. I found that most of the time we call ourselves believers as Christians. But I want to tell you something that will really shock you. Today in the church, we have got 90% of people who are full of unbelief. People who are unbelief are those ones that Jesus spoke about them and he said they are on the wayside. They hear the word. And the word when it was planted in them. Satan come and take it away from them. Listen, most of the time we preach about doubt and faith. It's easy for a person to have doubt. It's when the person had faith first. But unbelief, there is no doubt, there is no faith. Your character, the life you are living, the things you are doing shows you are not a Christian. Whether you hear the word of God or not. I don't know if you are hearing me. Tell us somebody say, whether you are Christian, 
or not, you are determined by the word you receive. You can still speak it out, but you are determined by the word you receive. So unbelief people, they receive the word with excitement, but there's no space in them. And from there, Satan come and take over. I don't know if you hear me. So these nine people, they fail to produce results because of unbelief. Hallelujah. Amen. If we read, I want us just to read some verses. Let's read maybe Hebrews 4 verse 1 to 10. Let's read maybe Hebrews 4 verse 1 to 10. You find the Bible says they fail in the promises. Though they were promised that they will get rest. Because the Bible shows that the promise was for them to take over, but when they fail, they got punishment. Can you read verse 1? Therefore, since a promise remain of entering his rest, yes. let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. Let's stop there. I want us to explain something there. There's a promise that we have been given. That promise brings fear to produce a right character. Let me say it again. The promise of God when it is given is for us to be aligned with it to produce the right character. The promise has been given so that we believe. And as we believe, even our lives must be aligned with our belief. So the Bible says we must fear if we don't do that. Though we had a promise, we are in unbelief. Read verse 2. Just look at verse 2. I want to teach you about this. Read it. Read verse 2. Verse 2. Yes. For indeed, this, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they had did not profit them not being mixed with faith in those who had it. Stop there. The word that was preached was not mixed up with faith. So the question is, it is that's the reason why they were unbelief. That's why they end up having unbelief. Because when you don't have faith have have the word was preached, but it never worked anything for them. They had it. Think about you are hearing the word all the time. But you are doing contrary to the word. Like I said, 90% of the church are believing people. Faith is not entering. And therefore, effectiveness in the Lord is we don't have results. We don't have answers. We are calling ourselves Christians. And all things are becoming possible. It's becoming difficult. We are surrounded with difficulties. Read verse 3, Mama. Read verse 3. For we who have believed do not enter that rest as he has said. So, I saw in the wrath they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. You can see here, God spoke something. I want to tell you that. But I don't say I'm judging, but I want to tell you. 
Though God promised that they will enter his rest. Because the word that was preached to them could not be coupled with faith. When they divert from faith, he showed to them that though I promise you will never enter my rest. Listen to this. It's only unbelief people that God, when he sees a, a standard that they've reached, he reaches a level where he's sure <inaudible> that these ones, this ones, they will never enter my house. I don't know if you hear me. Think about you are coming to church. Already God has shown you are coming to church, but you will never, never, never make it. It's only unbelief that can lead us there. Not lack of faith, but unbelief that can make God to rule us out. Why? Why do we have unbelief? Because there are things we believe in. And we cannot leave that and take another thing. If we take the word of God as it is, and and we, believe we believe in it, it, we will have unbelief with sin. Everybody have unbelief here. You can have unbelief with the truth word of the Lord. Or you can have unbelief with sin. In other words, even if you can, I can hear sin, I won't be part of it. So if you reach a level whereby God draws a line and say to you, I have shown you will never enter my rest. You can church. The word of God can be preached, but it will never produce faith. The fruits that we'll see on you will never be of faith. I can still preach. I can still come to church, but if the fact of the life I'm living and the things I'm doing, which are produced by my works of flesh, not by the word of God, because of that unbelief, God can stop us. God can just stop and say, this word will never produce anything. I don't know if you are hearing me. Let me show you another scripture. Let's pass it. Because I'm looking at unbelief as a problem. If we read, read Mark 6, verse 1. Mark 6. Just read from verse 1. Yes. Then he went out from there and came to his own country. He came to and his he, own country. And his disciples followed him. Yes. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is, giving to, which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the competitor son of Mary, the, and brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Sim, Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended of him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now he could do no mighty works there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and he healed them. Okay, I want to show you what happened? Why Jesus marveled unto their unbelief? You can write this scripture, Mark 5, verse 20. When Jesus casted the demon in the sight of Decapolis, 
everybody that side Marvel. Remember, Jesus left Galilee and went on the other side and cast a demon. Everybody there was shocked. And people were afraid and there. If we read verse 35 of Mark 5, you see the Bible says there was a ruler who came and was speaking. It's after when he came back. When he came back to his people, there was a ruler and the girl was dead. But the Bible uh, I mean, brings a report that you know, the girl was not dead. Bible was, was about, about to die. And the ruler was saying, can we go? Come, you heal my daughter. When, when Jesus was going, there was a lady that had a flow of blood for 12 years. And that lady was healed. When Jesus was moving, he was moving towards his people. There was a noise where he came from. Everybody was praising God. I don't know if you are hearing me. Everybody saw what he did that side. The report was given. There is a child that is about to die. Jesus moved forward. Let's go. The lady touched Jesus on the road. And the blood dried up. And And Jesus searched around. And the woman came out trembling and said, yes, it's me who touched you. If we can read there, just after the lady came out and the report, the Bible says, the people say, sorry, say, don't trouble the master. Your son is dead. Jesus was moving towards them. He was going to resurrect again. When he reached there, he resurrected again. From there, he entered his own people. When he reached the people, when he was preaching, they began to say, where did he get these things? Remember Jesus said one time, if you don't believe in me, believe in the works that I do. These people had a history that they have been told about Jesus. I want to tell you one of the people's history. Everybody who knows Jesus knew him by his father. The first thing will be this is the son of the carpenter. So, where did he study to get this? I don't know if you're hearing me. But the teachings of the people were there, which was was not producing anything from him. But Jesus. Jesus was teaching things that they were surprised of. They failed to grasp it. And their faith. But they questioned. Where did he get this thing? When they were questioning that. Jesus was watching them. They show unbelief. Because there was something in them they believed. There is some, no one who can convince them. Listen to this. A people of unbelief, you can't convince them. Even if you tell them, this is the truth, they will give you a reason why they believe what they believe. They can even fight you. By the time of Jesus, several times they wanted to stone Jesus. Several times they cast Jesus. You will see them, but their fruits. Their actions of unbelief produces what they believe in. I don't know if you are hearing me. So when Jesus healed, resurrect the girl, and and bring forth the girl, when he entered his people, they were questioning him. No, this man, no. Because the Bible says, they 
could not believe in him. And Jesus spoke and said, a prophet is not known. Hallelujah. If we read verse 6 there, read verse 6, verse 6, verse 6, verse 6 he said what? Chapter 6. And he marveled because of their unbelief then he went about the villages in a second second teaching and the Bible says he could not do mighty work I want to tell you something that you need to because know because of unbelief miracles will be magic I don't know if you hear me. I get valento. People will plan miracles. But what I plan, I mean, unbelief is like that. We don't have faith. There will be a staged miracle. It's unbelief for you. It makes us to create people to believe. We are called. 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 We they don't know what is happening on the other side. Everybody is surprised of the work. I mean, here, somebody rose from the dead. But still, you don't believe. He marveled and went away from God. And the Bible said, you could not do my works. One of the reasons why we don't see my works is not because of lack of faith. Lack of faith brings doubt. It's unbelief. Totally we are contrary to what the scripture says. are saying. We have got unbelief. We don't believe. We don't trust God can do something. I don't know if you are hearing me. That's why I say, hey, your problem is unbelief. You can see. You can worship. But you don't believe God can do something. Maybe it's because you believe something before. Now there's nothing called faith that can produce anything in you. Let me show you this scripture. In Romans 4, verse 17, verse 17, you will see the Bible says, Abraham never staggered. Never staggered in unbelief. If you read from 70 to 24, he had a strong faith giving glory to God. Can you read verse 17? Yes. As it is written, yes. I have made you a father of many nations uh -huh. in the pretense of him whom he believed God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Can you see? Can you on reading, Mama? Who, oh, contrary to hope, yes. in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall you, your descendants, be and not being weak in faith he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at his promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Abraham, he never staggered Abraham, in, in unbelief. He believed in the promises of God. And he gave God's glory. All the time, Abraham, when he looked around, when people were laughing at him, he just said, I know the promises of God are yes and amen. When people are laughing at him, he just said, I know. He began to glorify God. When the situation became tough, we began to stagger. We began to worry. We began to question. I don't know if you are hearing me. Most of the time, when the situation is tough, unbelief enters. We crush everything. But Abraham said, Abraham, I know what God has spoken. Let me give you an example of John. John, if you can read the book of John. 
I will give you the scripture. If you can read, you will see Jesus telling the disciples, let's go back to Bethany. When Jesus said that, he knew what has happened. He never staggered. Can we read the book of John? Yes. 11. Yes. Verse 15. John 11. Revelling verse 15. Just read John 11 verse 15. Revelling verse 15. You will see it is difficult to make people to believe. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Listen to this. Jesus, he knew that Lazarus was dead. And he knew that Lazarus could die when he's going on the way. And he understood that Lazarus was close to him. But when they come to report, he say, yeah, please, I'm very happy. This will bring faith to you. I'm excited that it will bring faith to you. At least, at least I was not there. At least I was not there. For the sake of your own faith. If not, you will say we have, we have staged death. I don't know if you are hearing that. So the Bible says there it shows that it is difficult to make people to have faith. I don't know if you're hearing me. That's why Jesus said, that is why Jesus can you see, see I was not there. So it is your advantage. Now, let's go there. Let's go there so Are that you won't have unbelief. Because if I, I was there, or maybe I was there two days ago, unbelief would enter you you will never believe again. I don't know if you're hearing me. So I'm glad you people you were with us and you had the report. Now, let's go there. And this is for the sake of your faith. I want to tell you something. Be careful of everything that can nullify your faith. Be careful of everything that you can hear. That that will bring because from there you can end up judging what the Spirit of God is doing. I don't know if you're hearing me. Check somebody and say, hey, be careful, be careful of your of people who can make you not to trust God again and have unbelief. We need Christians who can Read say today, I know there's evidence God will do it for me. I won't be seeing anything. But I trust what he said. I will stagger. I'm a child of Abraham. I'm not afraid of what I'm facing. I believe what God has promised. He's going to do it. Fight and believe by glorifying God. Sometimes you don't need to look at your situation. You can overcome unbelief by glorifying God. When the devil says there's a delay, he said the Lord is in control. We need Christians who are saying the Lord is in control. Sometimes when the pain is severe, that pain is searching for the faith in you. Open your mouth, don't listen to the pain. Begin to praise him. You are the healer. You are Jehovah Shama. It means you are here. I can't die when you are here. You have come to give me life. And life in abundance. So the pain is going away. Because by the stripes are we here. We are in Christians. Who won't worry about what they are facing. Who won't stagger. 
I see God this week giving you what you've been praying for. I say something is coming this week because you have got faith and belief is going away. You have got faith there's a miracle that is coming. Tell it up and say, hey, I'm hearing something. Look, this man called Elijah. That man could never stagger. That man just spoke. I mean, sometimes we need to do that. Just to speak. When the servant came and said, hey, we can't see anything. The sky is clean. He said the rain is coming. That man said, go and check again. The rain is coming. In other words, you didn't look it clear. I am hearing the rain in my spirit. Because I must hear it in my spirit before I see it in the physical. We need Christians who can fight and believe by hearing faith in the, in the spirit and seeing it in the spirit. I don't know if you are hearing me. He came back and said, there's nothing. He said, this is unbelief. Whatever I speak, whatever I bind here, it must be bound in heaven. Whatever I lose here, it must be lose in heaven. So the rain is coming. Go back and check. He went back. He said, the time was, I see a cloud like a palm of a head. And I say, the rain is serious coming. And what happened? The rain when it came, the Bible says, Elijah, Elijah ran to Jezreel. He even overtake a car. I don't know if you're hearing me. Listen to this. I want to tell you that by the faith, without unbelief, you are about to overtake your enemy. I say you are about to overtake your enemy. I say, hey, I cast away my unbelief. I cast away my unbelief. In the name of Jesus. Let's read two scriptures we close. Look at Psalm 25 verse 2. The Bible says David was having faith. But the enemies were coming closer. He prayed this prayer. Oh Lord, do not allow me to be ashamed. Because my enemies can triumph me. Don't allow me to be ashamed. Can you just read John 1 verse 10? 12? As I'm closing now. As do you have unbelief? Do you have unbelief? Do you have unbelief? John 1. John 1. 10 to 12. Read that verse. Read that verse. He was in the world, yes. and the world was made through him, uh -huh. and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of men, but of God. Listen. And the word became flesh. Listen, stop there. Unbelief makes us not recognize what belongs to us. Unbelief closes our eyes. We fail to partake on what we believe. Jesus came because of unbelief of what they've been told. They could not accept him. But those who believe, he gave them right power. They operate as sons and daughters of God. Unbelief affects our actions before God. We become weak and defeated. Many of you 
you are defeated already. When you are asking yourself what happened, it's unbelievable. When you look at the problem you are facing, you compare your problem with other people's problem. You forget that you can operate in the power of the Almighty. To those who believe in Him, they believe He gave them right. He gave them power to resemble him. Jesus could not fail. When sick people come, they all him. I don't know if you're hearing me. Everything was possible. Look at the impossibility around us. Because we are lacking the, the right to produce what is needed. You know, I was looking at all of us here. And I found that we have really moved out. We are in unbelief. That is why we believe in fighting others to get something from That is why we are developing our own strategies. That is why we getting what we need. If we believe him, the right to operate as he is, it will come. I don't know if you're hearing me. The right of operating as he is. You can be in a place where there is nothing. And you find God still blessing you there. Because there's a right in you. you can, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Look now how many times you pray prayers no change. Nothing changed. Look at ourselves today. There's unbelief somewhere. Tell them there's unbelief somewhere. If there's no unbelief, you will laugh at that challenge. You will laugh at that opposition. You know, sometimes even when God says pray for your enemies, because you know what will happen with yourself. Whatever they say, nothing will happen. I don't know if you're hearing me. You won't worry about enemies. You won't worry about witches and wizards. Because you know what God is about to do. In your life. There's something in you. Devil wants to remove it. Don't accept it. Glorify God in tough times. Until people see what you are meaning. Don't allow unbelief to control you. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. That's why you find that we are from this church to another that church. That is so wonderful. From, from this church, it's unbelief. When we are in this church, we hear this. When in this church, we hear about that. Those scriptures. If we question what is happening in the scripture, is what people told you. And this has destroyed you. And brought a delay. Now you can't pray this scripture. I believe really blessed for you. I don't know if you're hearing me. He was with them. Think about this. Jesus was with them. But they could not recognize him. Think about we are here. You can see us. I mean, even if Jesus can come and say, I'm here, you won't believe it. If you have got unbelief, you won't believe it. I don't know if you're hearing me. You know, these are the last days that we need to crash unbelief so that we'll see angels, so that we'll have visitation, so that we'll have results. I pray for you right now that by the faith you are heavy let people know that you are serving the living God as a lot of people know that you are serving the living God how many people are speaking to your ears as your neighbor can you just ask that kind of a question they are plotting unbelief they told you you can't make it here. They even told you that Charis is going to die. 
you used to worship when your hands are up. Because they told you charity will die. Your hands now when you worship. They can't pass your head. Even when you're in a church, you can't even hear the word now. Because they have told you. You can't hear anything. Satan comes and always steals the word from you. You are in stagnation. No moving forward. I want to tell you today. Remove all you had. And believe God is with you. I want to tell you. God want to show up by your life. It's not over until God says it's over. I say it's not over until God says it's over. I see God blessing you. You can glorify God when people are laughing at you. I know many people, I will tell you that. Many people never believe I'm a pastor. But I will tell you why. Because of my history. Same applies to you. Your history. Some people are holding it. I want you to prove them wrong. I don't know if you are hearing me. You didn't know Jesus. Your eyes are open. I don't know if you are hearing me. This year, you will show what faith can do. You will show them what faith can do. Do you believe that? Remove that unbelief. Remove what people told you. They say you can't succeed. They say you are a failure. They say you are, you are going to die. I'm telling you, you have lies. You have victory, you have success, you have life, wherever your prosperity is locating you, if you believe, shout hallelujah. You must never believe people who don't believe in you. People who don't believe in you are not your friends or your enemies. Because they fight your faith and bring unbelief. I don't know if you are hearing me. This is the time that you can rise up and tell yourself, no, I feel pains but it is God. I feel this pain is going. This pain is going. You see Poverty say no. I'm not going to be poor. Something is happening. Something is happening. Here. Remove this unbelief. Of say I'm born in a poor family. I have to die like this. This is our problem. It is not your problem. It's a problem of Satan. You can chase Satan away. You can resist him. With his teaching, and you hold the word. This year, I'm giving you a word. That you're going to be example in your family. If you believe, shout hallelujah.